Hello friends, Big D aka Wilson Audio Labs aka Old School Stereo back again but today we have something different something I've talked about for a while but haven't shown you vintage home theater receiver let's find out what it's all about here my friends is really the second receiver that I ever bought with my own money this is the Yamaha Natural Sound RXV670. For my research, it shows from, it's from around 1992 or 1993. Uh, check the link in the video description. I'll have a link to Hi-Fi Engine where you can see there's a brochure and some other uh, goodies there. So this is back in the analog days before digital. This had all analog inputs. It was a Dolby Pro Logic receiver and had the five channels of output so i will kind of give you an overview of this and i'm going to clean it up some because it is kind of dirty you can see years of dust and yes of course i saved the original remote and look at all the dust that's on that in beautiful 4k hdr isn't that just lovely we will clean all of this up then we're going to show you all the features the inputs and outputs and then guess what we will try it on the amp dyno and see how much power it does what do you say we'll stick around for cleaning these old receivers i like to use these windex electronics wipes which i realize it's just really windex on a soft cloth however if you use uh, paper towels you're likely to you know, get some residue left over. So that's why I like to use these, even though they are kind of pricey. How often are you cleaning vintage electronic gear? I, I don't know about you, but look how dirty that is. I guess if you buy a lot of this stuff from yard sales and from thrift stores, maybe you're doing this a lot. Maybe you just prefer to go the other method, which would be, you know, get some Windex and some microfibers or something but uh, I like the convenience of using these so this is what I'm going to use and if you look in the video description I'll leave a link if you want to pick some up those are affiliate links that help me out by giving me a little bit of percentage of that purchase so let's get this thing cleaned up and I'll show you some of the other things I use for cleaning it as well I like to use these Swiffer cloths. These are really nice to get the dust off. And then at your local dollar store, get you some of these brushes because they're real nice for getting in and between the different components here and getting the dust out. So give me a few minutes to clean this up and then we'll talk more about it. So here you can see the remote is nice and clean. Those Windex wipes did it. Got it back looking almost new, 30 years old. So don't you wish we could have something to wipe us down to knock off 30 years of age? <laughs> you big dummy. But yeah, and it looks nice and clean. Again, I bought this with my own money back then. So I take care of my stuff and I tend to hold on to things, especially things like this. So let's uh, flip it around and take a look at the front. Okay, here on the front of the receiver, you can see big power button here, headphone jack here, which once you plug that in, it uh, mutes the speakers and you use the volume control for that. There's A and B speaker here selection. So it has built-in connections for two pairs of front speakers, a test tone, the center mode, Dolby Pro Logic, Pro Logic Enhanced, and then we have the sound field processor, which includes concert, video, mono, movie, rock concert, concert hall, or off. We have the delay time, plus or minus, front effect level, plus or minus, center level, plus or minus, rear level, plus or minus. Really wish the receivers today had these controls, because if you guys are like me, you like to boost up the front a little bit to uh, give you more better dialogue to your center channel. 
So I mentioned earlier, but I didn't mention it this time, Dolby ProLogic. So this is after Dolby Surround ProLogic added the center channel. And you can see up here we have the input selections for VCR2, VCR1, LaserDisc or TV, Tape 1 monitor, tuner, CD, phono. We have eight different presets here for your FM. Tuning up and down. We have bass control here, treble control. I'll check and leave it uh, below, but I think this is 100 hertz and that's 10,000 hertz. Uh, tuning up and down. Memory, so you can... Uh, set your presets, the tuning mode, auto, uh, manual, or mono, FM or AM, and then ABCDE. So you've got multiple different presets that you can switch through. Have to remember back in the 90s, the FM was a big deal, so a lot of people like to use that. And on this end, we've got a really big volume potentiometer. It is lighted, so uh, it'll light up once we plug it in. You can see that operate. Let's check out the back. On the back of the receiver, you can see ground here. You see your FM, uh, ground and AM antenna connections here. Phono, this is for your uh, record players. And again, you will use your ground. CD, audio only. We have tape and record out. Again, left and right, audio only. Then we have audio and video for laser disc, VCR in and out, VCR two in and out. And then we have uh, just a regular output and a monitor out as well. These are our RCA outs. There was no super VHS at this time or SVHS. What is it? S-Video. There, there was S-Video at the time, but this was a lower end model or actually a mid end model receiver and did not have the S-Video connections. Here we have the rear effect output via RCA jacks. And at the time, it was really difficult to find receivers that had preamp outputs for the front channels or for subwoofers. So this one had preamp outputs, which if you wanted to use these for subwoofers, you'd have to use a Y adapter and kind of split it because these little jumpers that are built in, pretty much they look like almost uh, staples. <laughs> but um, these bridge the two channels or, or connect the two channels together. Um, there's a phono here for the remote control center channel. It says 8 ohm minimum. These are all via the spring terminals, which are not my favorite. Rear channel say 8 ohm minimum. And then front, we have A and B. So you have uh, two different pairs of speaker outputs. On this side, you do have a couple of AC switched outlets. It says 100 watt max total for those. And then we have our power cord. As far as the specs go, the RX V670 says 70 watts per channel at 8 ohms, each channel driven, including the effect channels. Dynamically, 90, 105, 130, and 155 at 8, 6, 4, and 2 ohms, respectively. So let's get the uh, amp plugged in here. We're just going to use the front channels to test on the dyno, but let's get them plugged in using the uh, 12 gauge wire. And let's try the amp dyno test here. We're going to use 1 kilohertz tone. And first off, we'll start with eight ohms, rated 70 watts by two. Certified test takes us up to 1% THD. Understand the amp is rated well under that, but um, 103 and 98. So it easily beat its rated power, 70 watts. Again, we're hitting 1% distortion here. The uncertified test actually takes us up to clipping. So we weren't able to verify that 0.05%, but it sounds like uh, we're Probably going to easily get it. 105 and 101 uncertified at 8 ohms. Let's try that dynamic burst test. 1 kilohertz tone. Again, good power. Over 100 watts per channel. 116 and 109 at clipping. Now, we don't have a 6 ohm test, so we'll have to try a 4 ohm test. It's rated 130 by 2 dynamically only. Let's try it certified up to 1% distortion. And check this out, over 150 watts, 157 and 150 at 4 ohms. Again, you can ignore the voltage on the right side. That's just for the amp dyno itself. So don't worry about that. Um, uncertified up to clipping, 162 and 156. That averages out to be about 159 watts per channel. That's awesome. Dynamically. This is where it's rated 130 watts. We easily got that and more. 182 and 177 
Nope, 185 and 177. So great power here from the Yamaha. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the coupler here and Y adapters so we can hook up a powered subwoofer, the Polk Audio PSW-10. Check a link in the video description for the other video on that subwoofer and also um, for the link to purchase one if you want. So let's get the iPhone plugged in via analog jack into the CD connection on the back and let's listen to it. Little song demo, Smokey's Lounge, Track Tribe, here we go. This one's called Stranger Things. we've hooked up two extra speakers for the rear fill. So let's uh, try out these DSP modes and see how they sound. In its time, the RXV670's remote was really advanced. It not only had a lot of functions built in, the remote was large, the buttons were easy to see. It came with um, a way that you could actually put a little sheet over top and write in your own little options there for what you wanted to do. But it could also learn. So you take your other remotes and put it up to the face of it and you could learn the signals. And uh, anyway, it just had a lot of nice, neat options. So it was a cool remote. Now let's find out what's inside this amplifier. Take off the screws on the outside. There are two on the back. There are two on either side. Take those off and there's one at the top. So then we'll lift the uh, amp plate up and pull it back. You can see the daughter boards inside. You can see the large uh, heat sink for the outputs and also the huge transformer. Again, all that aluminum there for the uh, heat sink to keep those outputs nice and cool. It does use audio grade Elena cap, 6,800 microfarad, very nice. And then we also have some more Elena cap, 16 volt, um, 47 microfarad or 470 microfarad. But overall, I mean, spaghetti, spaghetti wiring here. Um, whoever works on these receivers, I feel sorry for you because there is so much going on in here. I'm just glad this one still works. You can see internally, it still looks relatively new. The caps seem to be okay, so pretty cool. Now, before we get to the end, let's try 2.67 ohm stereo and see what it does. It's not rated certified, it's only rated dynamically. So certified to 1% THD, 168 and 159, so not much more than the 4 ohm rating. But what about the dynamic burst at 2.67 ohms? Check this out, 236 and 222, nice power from this 30 year old amplifier. And as far as the results go, quality and performance from back in the day, this amplifier was over $500 and it's proven that it was worth the money. And I found a really neat brochure here for the amplifier or for the receiver. And it shows all the specs and it talks about why you need to buy this and 
Cinema DSP will change your idea of what a receiver is, all kind of cool stuff. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Till next time, let's hit that slide and watch some more videos. Slow motion. Tried to lose my phone. <laughs> what?